his gate and move further into his court, what kind of sacrifice are we offering unto our God? It is interesting to know that for many, very many of us, when we come to God, it is all about God do this for me, God do this for me, God do that for me, God do this for me. And it is even sadder when we hear people saying, God punish my enemies, God make my enemies not to be this, to be that, to be that. My friends, the only, in my opinion, the only reason somebody will hate you is because they have seen something in you that they want for themselves. That's why they're worried about you. Why should I begin thinking about Father Kul? In Creole, we will say, that water we not for you. You know, go run past you. So if you know say the water not for you, why worry about the water we not for other person? So in coming before the courtroom of God, what are you offering as a sacrifice? You are offering that which he has done for you and that which you are anticipating for him but to continually be asking for the punishment of your enemies who are concerned about your water look if you pray for their punishment they will be punished and if they are punished what happened they will be in a more miserable state then they will be concerned more about you and then they will be doing more negative things about you because since they were on level five you were on level 10 they were concerned now you have prayed that they will go down to level two then their concern level will be higher. And if their concern level will be higher, what will happen? Then they will hate you more. And then instead of you going forward, you will be spending all your time worrying about your enemy. But that is not the God that you are serving. The God that you are serving is saying to you and to me that when you see your brother or sister going down the rain, stretch forth your hand and help that person out so that you will bear one another's burden. And in bearing one another's burden, fulfill the law of Christ. Oh, how I wish that in the body of Christ, we will be such a people that will so love each other, that will be so ready to support each other, that will be so ready to stretch forth a hand and help lift up our brother or sister rather than being a body that sometimes doesn't want to see the progress of someone else. In entering into the courtroom of God, you offer sacrifice. And within the context of our harvest thanksgiving, you offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, appreciating God for all that he has done for you. Sometimes it is very easy for us as Christians to pretend concerning our own lives. But as we will say, when you lie down, you and your pillow you know the realities that confront you and in the midst of those realities what will you offer unto your god a colleague of mine will always say it is not for any reason that god has decided to give us two ears and one mouth some of us use our mouth more than we use our ears in entering into the courtroom of god it is also about God speaking to you and you listening and acting on what he has said to you. And today, as you celebrate this um, Harvest Thanksgiving, what is God saying unto you? But as you offer your sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving, he further asks you to bless, to praise the name of the Lord. My friends, I have seen a lot of grayots who will always see you by the roadside and will be like, Bani Manga, Ma Hamon Samam, Ma Hamon Sabai, Ma Hamon Sali, me, I don't know you, how do you know my parents, my grandfather, my whatever. And people will always praise you just because they want something from you. I have found out in the small years that I have been in ministry, whenever people come to you and say, Reverend, Charlie, you are good. Reverend, when you preach, eh, I see heaven. It means they want something from you. They will start by praising you, making you feel so big, and then they will say to you, but Reverend, you see that man, eh? 
I don't know. He doesn't like you, right? If you have a problem with somebody, go and sort it. Don't bring reverend in there and make the reverend a fool of what you have as a situation. If you are bringing the reverend there, bring him there to bring reconciliation and peace, not to bring division. But the griots who will continually praise you. Indeed, I think we have all seen so many griots who will tell you so many things about yourself that some of them you don't even know. We are not called to be griots of God. We are called to have a relationship with God. Now, in having a relationship with God, you will be able to bless his name. You will be able to praise him such that whatever you are saying to him, it is not all about what you have read. It is not all about what you have heard, but it is about what you have experienced. My friends, in this nation, if only we will have a deeper relationship with God, then I want to suggest that every wind of doctrine that comes our way, blowing us left, right, and center, we will be able to stand because you know this God whom you are serving. People will not come and give you various special prepositions about this God because you know who you are serving. I don't have a problem with people saying various things about Jesus, which to a very large extent are negative. Because you know what? Whatever you want to say about Jesus, the Jesus I have experienced is somebody more than a prophet. Amen? Amen. Hey, a prophet will come and give you God's word, but this is somebody who has come to live and demonstrate that I am the word of God. So he is beyond that. So I will not listen to somebody telling me, oh, Jesus is a prophet. Yes, he is a prophet to your experience. But as Christians, what is our experience of Jesus? No wonder the hymn is, um, the, the beautiful hymn, I don't know how, where it is in ancient and modern, where, um, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds. In verse 4, it will say, Jesus, my shepherd, brought brother friend my prophet priest and king that was a sum of what this hymn is has experience of Jesus so if we will ask you this day who is Jesus to you you should be able to say he is my savior he is my messiah he is my brother he is my friend he is my ex he is my wife and because of your experience with him I suggest to you when you are asked to praise his name you are asked to bless his name. You know where you are standing. It is not something you are doing because you are asked to do it. It is something you are doing as a response of the degree of intimacy that exists between the two of you. And if you have a good relationship with this man called Jesus, then I want to suggest that wherever you see, you find yourself, you will want to make him known because he has been good and great unto you. So on this day, as we celebrate our harvest thanksgiving, may we be reminded of these words from the psalmist. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, and give thanks and bless or praise his holy name. And you're doing all of that because of your relationship with him. Thus far, who has he been to you? Thus far, how has he manifested himself to you? Thus far, how would you reflect him? I pray that as we continue with our harvest thanksgiving, we will truly celebrate the mercy grace, peace, and presence of God over our lives. And in so doing, this nation and the world will know that Jesus, whom you and I serve, is more than a prophet, but is the Messiah who identifies with humanity and in identifying with humanity makes us to share and partake even in the graces of God. May God bless us, and may our lives be a true reflection of his word. Amen.